happy holiday weekend. I am enjoying my extra day with this Memorial Day. I sit down with Beth Walker of 36th Street Events here in Austin. We sit down in South Congress in the heart of the city and talk about her story. You're going to love it. Uh, we kind of knew each other for a little while and when I heard more about her story, I was like, please tell me more. So I sat down with her and we talked about how her company was actually purchased from an existing business and all that nitty gritty detail I love. So learn more and also hear some tips about how she incredibly increased her prices. Um, I love her perspective on that and I don't think you're going to want to miss it. Enjoy! So I know just from similar circles, we obviously have hung out and yes. I feel like I don't know the totality of the 36th Street, like just how it's evolved. Yeah. And I feel like you've been a part of 36, the brand for how long now? Since 08. Since so 08. Yeah. 10 years. That's yeah. amazing. I yeah. Know. And it's, Melde old. it's Meldine's 10th year too. And I'm like, what happened? That. Like. I'm like, have I really been doing this for 10 years? It's exactly. Crazy. Yeah. So I know that you're from Oklahoma? Kansas. Kansas. Okay. Yes. So you were in Kansas. Tell me a little bit about My like... My family in Nebraska. So oh, I, I didn't know that. So I your roots. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. So, so tell me about your start. Like how did you end up and wind up in Austin? And yes. tell me more about... Yeah. So that I details. did business management and leadership at the University of Kansas. Okay. Um, I actually started school interior design. I thought I was going to be an interior designer. And then through the program, fine arts program, I realized that wasn't exactly the right fit for me, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had like a college midlife crisis and ended up in the business school, graduated business management and leadership. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't want to do that path, that career that, you know, especially in Kansas, a different um, realm in yeah. 08. I mean, yeah. weddings, even in 08, were so different. So I did some research. Me and my husband were just getting married and we wanted to move. Did you get married in 2008? Eight. Okay. Awesome. I graduated, <laughs> moved our stuff to Austin, got married. Like, let's start everything new, and then, everything yeah. fresh. <laughs> Major life <laughs> happenings all in one month, basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we moved down here just and on And did you a choose Austin for any reason? Had you been here before? People had told us it was a lot like Lawrence. Okay. Um, we came to visit spring break our senior year and just loved it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no reason. I feel like we saw Austin right before it was, like, booming. It was, like, right And it's still booming though. in many ways, yes. but, yeah. yeah. My, so funny looking back, my um, stipulation for my husband was that there are palm trees. So, there you go. There's, I, we That's do like, have occasional. We have cacti. We yeah. have cacti and a few palm trees. It's so silly to think back. But yeah, so we moved to Austin, didn't know anybody, and just dove right into the event world. I started as an intern with 36th Street. So okay. I emailed every planner that was here in Austin and ended up getting an internship with 36th Street. The original owners started it in 06 and so okay. I did a six-month program with them and then started right afterwards which is amazing. That's crazy. Yeah. So tell me more about that like transition. Was she just like done or was it like she, you just kind of became more of like a peer level and then transition? Yeah. Like how was that when she originally approached you or that conversation? Yeah. yeah because you were young and right out of school. That's right. huge. Yes. Yeah. I started with the original founders, so there were two, um, and interned through them, and then they actually sold it to Bethany, which is confusing, okay. Beth and Bethany. Um, so I was ending the program and knew this was like my vision of what I wanted to do for my career, and basically approached her and was like, I want to be a part of this company, and ended up working for her for five years. So it wasn't okay. until 2013 that I purchased okay. 36th Street. Um, and I run my business in a similar way that I feel like those that work for me, um, it's their business as much as it is mine. I think that's really important. So I had that mentality working for her. I felt like I'm going to invest my heart and soul in this and that um, in the end I want to be really proud of what I do and who I work for. And um, so, yeah, leading into it, I felt like it was my company, right? <laughs> And because we had Beth and Bethany as names, it was very confusing. Easy. We both had brown hair. Um, yeah, and I, I just got to a point where um, I think she was a little burnt out. It's a hard industry. I mean, we all know that. It's There's ebbs and flows emotionally, absolutely. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, we, it, 
constantly is one of the most stressful jobs, and mm-hmm. certainly being a planner is one of those. Um, I don't. I couldn't be a planner for that. I mean, I feel like I deal with enough detail and stress, but it's a lot. Yeah, we, we juggle a lot in a in a good way. I mean, I still love it and I'm still doing it, but I think you it's know, so if rewarding. You don't love it, then it's easy to just get that foot out the door. Um, and so we're feeling that a little bit, and I just basically took the initiative to say, I'm either going to start my own or buy 36th Street. Yeah. That loyalty in myself. I was like, oh, I worked so hard for five years. I need to, you know, keep this. And truly, it was at the point where the industry was booming here, mm-hmm. and it would it would have been another new name in a sea of new names of yeah. people. Where we were established, we had that backing, and so that was really important for me to buy 36th Street to Which is awesome. stay at that level. How yeah. have you kind of made it your own? Sure. Over yeah. the last few years. Um, I feel like it's so it's been five years now that you've owned it. Mm-hmm. It's changed so much, even thinking back to what I used to offer, what I used to charge. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I feel like you have. Evolved. I've seen your 36th Street evolve as being more of a design like forward, and people yes. are hiring you because of your aesthetic and right. you know knowing that you can bring these big ideas to exactly. life, which is awesome. Yeah, so that's been fun. I mean, I like that part, being yeah. you know interior and loving that fine art side of it, and colors and theory and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, when I bought the company, it was like, I need a rebranding, I need a new logo, I wanted to take, and felt so much support from the Austin planners to take the company from where it was to where it needed to yeah. be, just with our reputation and how long we've been in the business. Exactly. So how was, I guess, one thing that comes to mind is like during that time period, from a legality standpoint, did you bring in a lawyer or have like for that transition? Because yes. I feel like that would be really overwhelming for a young entrepreneur yeah. to understand how to navigate that Correct. and protect themselves and also be kind and create, you know, continue that relationship. Yeah, Do you yeah. have any tips for like that transitional experience and kind of cutting the cord essentially? Yeah. So I did a lot of research within the Austin community. There's a lot of free um, actual business startup companies yeah. that you can reach out to. And so that's what I did. I basically reached out to them, reached out to a small business lawyer and had them put together um, a purchase agreement basically mm-hmm. because what happened and it's interesting because we're an LLC her LLC closed and I opened so I actually reopened yeah. as I think it's 36th Street Weddings and Events no hers is Wedding and Events mine was Events so it had okay. to be a little bit yeah. different um, but you're still buying the name and yeah. we don't have any assets we all work from home which is lovely Yeah, but it's really just the name and the reputation. Well, and I feel like especially as I'm seeing young entrepreneurs in the wedding industry specifically, it's kind of a generational shift right now where mm-hmm. I feel like there are a lot of people who have been in the industry 30 and 40 years who are retiring. And, you know, I think they also are searching for people to kind of pass on that legacy yeah. too that I think yeah. it's going to be a more open conversation of like how do these companies continue to evolve and how can young entrepreneurs kind of jump in and assist you know yeah I think way. to me actually in moving down to Austin that initial like I want to be a wedding planner I'm so excited <laughs> I had a business degree so it, part of me felt like I could just start a company and I should have started a company you know at the get-go but in the end I feel I felt like I didn't have that knowledge and there's so much it's so interesting because now there's actual like college yeah, degrees for, for, for planner <laughs> they didn't have that back no. then or at least in Kansas where I was and so um, I felt like I wouldn't do myself justice to just start this and not know anything and that's why it was so key for me to get the experience I think that uh, we still do that same program where we do an unpaid internship and then leading into like a support role to be able to get that experience to know if you love it. So, so. for, I know, I mean, you all individually kind of have your own events, right? Mm-hmm. In different yep. tiers, but yep. you also do help each other. We do. So yeah. how was that, how creating that structure, you know, did, was it just trial and error, you know, or how did you kind of develop that that system's working really well for your yeah. model? You know, I, I bought into that basically. I didn't know any different. Um, I think that for us, because we don't have a central office, that it does work to have one person be the lead for the, these events and these clients. And then on the back end, it's really, and it's always evolving. I feel like our team is always having, you know, reviews of our services working, are they not? Um, but it's led us to then support each other because we have higher end clients that want people who know what they're doing yeah Yeah. and I think that's why it takes a while to get to that planner level to be able to have the confidence in any given situation to not stress out not make them feel you know more stressed or nervous and then um, 
make those decisions wisely. Um, so I know you mentioned pricing earlier. Mm, yeah. So how have you kind of figured out what your worth is, what your team's worth is? I think I know I way undercut myself at the beginning. Oh my just gosh, wanting like business. I said, yeah. And I feel like, you know, I feel like we're all on the same path in terms of you know, we all are elevating the industry at large and mm-hmm. your prices are affecting my prices and, sure. and other stations' prices are affecting mine and other planners' prices are affecting yours. Yeah. How have you kind of found your sweet spot or what advice would you give to yourself if you were just starting? Yeah, yeah. So I think that there's a lot of discussion on pricing, <laughs> oh my, with planners especially. But I think within every community or market, there are bubbles a max and a min for yeah. kind of where you should be. And certainly those that with less experience shouldn't be at the top. You can't just make that jump. Yeah. Um, you're not doing yourself any justice or the community really. So I think you need to have a starting point where you feel comfortable that you know that this is the amount of money that you're making, but then don't stay there. Don't stay stagnant and just be like, well, they're fine with yeah. paying it and I'm making some money. I think that, you know, evaluate every six months and see Am I getting the client I want? Do I have too many? Do I have too less? And then evaluate whether you can raise it. You know, $500, what the group of ladies that I love that told me and how I jumped up, I doubled my prices from when I bought it to like that for six months was to, and you're always really nervous doing that, yeah. right? Like, am I going to have and anybody the that's a huge, as much because yes. or you talk to 10 people and you have one person that books versus you're used to like five or six. Yeah. Um, So that is always a little nerve wracking, but raise it a little bit. So first bid, do it by $500 or whatever you feel comfortable. Um, And once you book five at that rate, do the next jump. So Mm -hmm. keep raising and and certainly where your sweet spot is. Exactly. And then certainly you'll see that there is, you know, for any given service, especially in our market, there's a max, you know, where you're, you hit that limit and that's kind of where you're comfortable. I do think experience is huge and that Mm -hmm. should navigate in the cost. exactly so some of my planners do charge less than i do and i think that also depends on how many events that you want to do mm-hmm. too so sure. hand in hand so in terms of service what is your thoughts on giving your time away for free i feel like we saw the movement in the last 10 years for like styled shoots and everyone was just donating their time and it was hard seeing a conversion or you know some of those things yeah um has there any been any boundaries that you've put in place to yeah. now i think in building your portfolio that in the beginning like that is something that you want to do you want to get these beautiful images and I think now especially having two small children it's really kind of cut that off I don't do a ton truly um, of free stuff unless it's something I'm passionate about so typically it would be something that I have a great relationship with the photographer we have an idea we bounce off and we want to make that happen so it's um, you know product that I'd use for social media and that's really our marketing budget these days we've kind of gone away from the standard marketing and gone to Millennials what yeah. people want they want to see that that side of it So I think know your worth know your time if it's something that you feel passionate about I don't think you have to say no just because you're not making any money, but making sure that you're doing a good job of benefiting those that are supporting you and helping you in the community Mm -hmm. so making sure they're tagged and everybody knows about it um and then definitely making the most of your time so not doing stretching a season exactly when you're then not making any money like you're making beautiful images but like your take home is you know negative so yeah well you're definitely a woman who juggles many things especially with motherhood (laughs) (laughs) and so how has that transition been for you I know a lot of women our age are you know business owners and beginning to be new mothers or wanting to be new mothers how has that kind of affected the way that you perceive your business yeah you know it's it's interesting. It's such a struggle because I'm such a busy person. I love to be busy, obviously love events, love that energy. And then, you know, when you have a kid, it like rocks your world a little bit, like in the best way. But to some degree, I've struggled with feeling, because I did want to take some time. I have too. So with my second, with Lincoln, um, take some time back and really just enjoy that, that time with him. Exactly. Yeah. So I still had events, but I wasn't taking on as many. As you can imagine, when you go from having a lot to a little, you're like, wait, am I like out of the market? And like, your business do I need has grown to... in the last couple of years as you've had your children too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they were like full on a part of it since I took over. 
I basically bought it in 2013, had my first one in 2014, so it was like this mix of everything. I remember breastfeeding my child and having like a staff meeting. I'm like, sorry y'all, this is part of it. Welcome to the team. <laughs> my four interns were like, okay, so we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn a lot in this business. And I'm like, you know. Do it's real life. So, yeah, yeah, it's real life. Yeah. So, have you found, like, in order to structure your schedule? Because I know I feel so guilty when I'm not able to be engaged with my clients or available for my clients. And obviously, I travel a lot. And so, when I don't feel as present for them, I can feel that guilt and not having children, but have feeling that same way. I feel yeah. it would be similar. Have you found that you're still working every day, or are you allowing yourself the freedom to take off a day to be with your, like, how have yes. you found that happy yeah. balance? I think getting your clients like initial boundaries this is so huge first that took me a few years to figure that out so boundaries are great and then I do I limit it I'm more working I would say quote-unquote part-time hours um, my kids go to school or have a sitter Monday Wednesday Friday and then Tuesday Thursdays are more flex days where I still work like I'm checking my email like you're still engaged um, especially being a business owner but I'm not fully in it so when they're napping when they have rest time they're I'm able to like do that side of it a little bit and check in, but really being diligent and making the most of your hours, making the most of your time is huge. So I think it's just whatever works for your family and your dynamic, but for me, it made the most sense to have key days where I'm really focused and then allowing myself to really enjoy that, that time when they're little, yeah. they're so sweet and do change so fast. And I think the, having that structure and being open to, re, like you said, every six months checking in on pricing, I think it's great to every six months or even less check in on your schedule and figure yeah. out what's actually working and based on your time of your life. And, exactly. You know, and I think, you know. Giving yourself freedom to make those adjustments yes. when necessary. Yeah. And working from home is totally different than if you have an office. You know, mm-hmm. certainly we work from home, so I make my own hours. I can schedule it and know that if I have big client meetings, and I need to work in the night, I can work in the night too, you know? So whatever's comfortable with your, you know, network and your family and your time in your life, I think is huge, yeah. So let's talk productivity hacks. Yeah. Is there anything you're really into right now that's like helping you move your business more productively? So for those who don't use like a planning pod situation, we use Gmail. a huge hack that I share with everybody is that you need to install Boomerang with Gmail. Boomerang is okay. Tell me more. Amazing. Is Boomerang not like the camera thing? No. Okay. No. So tell me more about it's, what is Boomerang. I want to implement it. <laughs> you should go do it right now. It's life changing. So like I was mentioning, working in the evenings, uh-huh. I work in the evenings, but my clients do not know that. Boomerang allows me to schedule messages, <laughs> and then we I, we were just talking before we started about Marco Polo, which. Ren, who works with me, uh, got us on. So because we work from home and don't have a central office where we see each other every day, we've started to use Marco Polo, and it's basically a video chat app um, or text video Uh app um, where you can make videos to each other, send it, and then people can watch it at their convenience. So that's awesome. That's been nice to, you know, we're on site visits or day of and talking about what do you think about this area exactly or layouts and stuff. So I recommend that too, or just for fun with your (laughs) friends. You can have groups. So it's not just one-on-one. You Uh can have a team um, talk back to each other. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Yes. Cheers. Thank you for hanging out this morning. It's It's so nice and often, and it's just starting to get a little warm. I mean, it is supposed to be like 98. Today's supposed to be one of the hottest days, but yeah, it's a good way to start the week. I know. Go to the pool. Give us a second, Margarita. (laughs) Go over and say hello to Beth. You can find her at 36th Street Events and at 36streetevents.com. I'm sure she would love to hear from you and what you enjoyed and learned from our talk today. But seriously, isn't she amazing? I love sitting down with her and hearing her story. I literally don't know anyone in this industry who's acquired an existing business. Next week, I'm on my way to San Diego for the Not Pro Workshop, and I get to sit down with Dusty, who's a makeup artist, and I just love my time with her. And we got a little bit of makeup tips and a lot of facts about how she scaled her business. So subscribe and don't miss it next week.